This is Carrie TV. Boo. Oh, hey, Matt. Hey, Meredith. Welcome to the Bud TV team. Thank you. Is this where you tell me we're going to talk to someone about Carrie? It is, and luckily, it's about Halloween. Awesome. You're watching Bud TV, the monthly program that keeps you informed about what's going on in and around Carytown government. This month on Bud, we'll talk to Ryan O'Quinn about Halloween and Carrie. Then we'll take a look back at Carrie history for a minute. And for all things green and Carrie, Shrishna Guilford takes us there. Plus, protect the waterways when you fertilize this fall. All that and more here on Bud TV. Hi, welcome to Bud TV. We're here at the Page Walker Arts and History Center, one of a bunch of places Cary has that you can both be frightened and eat candy at the same time. The Town of Cary Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Department puts on all kinds of tricks and treats. Everything from sailing pumpkins and ghost walks to doing a time warp with Frankenfurter on a Friday night. In fact, there's so much going on, we have Ryan O'Quinn here to tell us all about it. Ryan, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So what do you guys have prepared for this month? On October 26th, we'll have our, uh, the start of kind of everything. Bond Park will have their flotilla. You can bring your carved pumpkins, see them out on the lake. In addition to that, they'll have some food trucks, some live music. Um, and then we also have the start of both the Cary Teen Council's Haunted House at the Herb Young Center, as well as the Rocky Horror Picture Show live out at Cocoa Booth. On October 27th, in downtown Park, we'll have the Great Pumpkin Carve event. We'll have pumpkin carving stations, we'll have pumpkins for purchase, or you can bring your own. And then in addition to that, we'll have 3D carving classes. We'll be showing It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, as well as Toy Story of Terror. Over at the Art Center, we'll also have a costume dance party uh, for kids ages 3 through 10. It's a great opportunity for families to come out. Both of those events are very family friendly. Uh, and then in addition to that, the Heart of Cary Association will be having their Fall for Cary Festival along South Academy Street and parts of Chatham. Great. So what else do you need to tell people who want to go? Uh, if you're coming, you can park in downtown uh, at the public lot at Waldo and Walker. And then in addition to that, you can also park here in uh, Town Hall Campus at the police station lot or the parking deck. Great. Thanks for all the help, Ryan. Thanks for having me. This is your Cary History Minute. In the spring of 1865, at the end of the Civil War, Colonel Oscar Jackson and his Union troops took over the Page Homestead, located on what is now the site of Cary Town Hall. Troops established a hospital there to care for their sick and wounded, and they secured their horses in a barn with an armed guard. On the last night of their occupation, the youngest of their wounded died. The next morning, as they lined up their horses to depart, the dead soldier's horse was nowhere to be found. Decades later, a stable boy, Tom Sanderson, said the horses in the stable all at once began to kick and squeal. He then heard the sound of a lone horse galloping full force down the dirt road. However, there was no horse in sight. Two young boys in 1935 recounted a similar tale. When they heard a ruckus from the horses in the barn, the sound of galloping hoofbeats followed. Excitedly, they went out to look, but there was no horse, not even a hint of dust in the road. Fall can be a chore as the leaves change color and fall down, but don't worry, Carrie's got you covered. The town will collect loose leaves three times from each street at no charge, according to the map and schedule below, or search your specific address on loose leaf collection schedule. Visit townofcary.org and search leaf collection to get access to the interactive map that will show you when leaves will be picked up in your neighborhood. And after your kids quit jumping in the piles, remember a few tips on putting the leaves out for pickup. Place leaves at the curb and out of the roadway. Avoid covering sidewalks, storm drains, water meters, fire hydrants, and sewer cleanouts. Keep piles at a distance from mailboxes and parked cars. Keep trash, large stones, and other debris out of leaf piles. Good luck with your leaves and have a great fall. Hey, what are you doing in here? Plastic bags are never accepted in your curbside cart. In fact, they're not accepted in the Carry Recycles program and are considered contamination. Recycling contamination occurs when incorrect items are put in your recycling cart or when the right materials are prepared the wrong way. 
Contamination can reduce the quality of recyclables and the value it has as a commodity. In fact, when there's too much contamination in your cart, it can send all the good stuff straight to the landfill. So let's take a look at what other creepy contaminants might be lurking in your cart. Along with plastic bags of all shapes and sizes, please don't put chip or candy wrappers and food bags in your cart. And don't forget to keep out any black plastic trays and those clamshell containers like this. Also, when it comes to plastic and paperware like cups, plates, and utensils, keep those all out of your recycling. And when the party's over or holidays change, never put decorations in your cart like plastic or wooden signs or even the lights. And when you put your accepted items in your cart, Never put them in a plastic bag like this. Always keep them loose in the cart and keep that plastic bag out. So remember to treat your cart right and only recycle what's accepted. You can refer to the list on the back of your recycling calendar and find it online at townofcarry.org slash recycling. I'm Shrishna Guilford and remember to carry it green. If you're fertilizing this fall, keep carry waterways clean by keeping the fertilizer on your lawn. It's estimated that more than half of the pollution in our nation's waterways come from stormwater runoff. That's according to the Stormwater Coalition. And if you're not careful, fertilizer can end up on your driveway or sidewalk and then into the road and storm drains. Keep in mind a few tips. Test your soil. You may be adding nutrients to your lawn it doesn't need. So consider performing a soil test that will tell you the nutrient level and texture of your soil. Don't fertilize before a storm. It sounds like you'd want to do it before a heavy rain, but fertilizer needs time to sink in, and a storm will simply wash it away and into the stormwater drains. Fertilize your lawn, not the sidewalk. Fertilizer that doesn't stay on the lawn makes its way into storm drains. Once you're done fertilizing, sweep any excess back onto your lawn. So keep those tips in mind and keep Carrie's waterways clean. Thanks for watching Bud TV. We want to leave you with something special we found along the way. The girls and boys of summer are still at it, and we took an opportunity to check in on some of Carrie's many baseball and softball leagues.